Hello, this is Richard from Animate.com and this is a short tutorial on parallax mapping, a very simple setup for textures which are placed in global space coordinates for stone textures, ground textures, where you don't need UV maps. Right away I will start the shortcut so you can follow my clicks. I'm going to add a plane which will serve as our ground plane. We will um, add a small stone texture here and I'm switching the timeline into the shader editor and add a shader. Since we're in Eevee we're going to do everything in the real-time shading and I'm switching to the camera view as well as lock the camera to the view. Of course we are using image textures so I'm going to add texture, image texture, and I'm looking for an image texture where I also have a height map. So I'm choosing this one. Be sure that your height map utilizes all grays from black to white. So here we are going to load the height map, this one. First let's have a look how it will look in global coordinates. Uh, as I said before we are not going to map it using a UV map but rather the geometry node using the position in space. You see it turns out quite small. Of course we can correct that with a mapping node but I won't do that for reasons of convenience. We are also going to map the height texture in this space and of course for reasons of shading we're going to use a bump node in order to shade the ground. Since it's stones they're quite rough and won't need a lot of specularity maybe we will raise the metallic value a little bit but that's just shading stuff we can ignore that since we're now concentrating on the mapping as you see uh, if I'm getting close and uh, watching parallel to the surface uh, the whole texture looks very flat and this is where parallax mapping comes in we are going to map the position vector together with the incoming vector and to mix these in a meaningful manner we are going to utilize the height map um, most of all we have to turn the height map into a depth map so I'm going to subtract the height values from one if I use these values to subtract the incoming vector from the position. I'm getting mapping coordinates which seem to punch the texture according to the height map into the ground. So let's say these two are our depth map and here we can amplify the depth map. As you saw, in a fuzzy manner, we already get an offset going down the z-axis. Where actually it's not the z-axis, it's actually approaching um, the camera along the surface. But that's just a trick which parallax occlusion mapping is using. And from here on we can um, enhance this setup. Uh, let's do so. If we add another mix node, because there are areas now where we can use this new mapping space and some areas that look fuzzy where we use uh, the still the incoming position vector which is also going into the height map here. So right away I'm going to reroute uh, a node and connect it 
to a mixed note here. In order to know which we want to uh, use, which of the mapping coordinates we want to use, I'm going to add a greater than math node. And step by step we're going to use values of the height map in order to make steps of depth into the ground. So these nodes are the ones which we are using in order to punch uh, our height map into the ground. So I'm going to group these nodes into a shader group by pressing Ctrl G. And uh, most of all, to get a single value for each step, we're going to use the greater than value as input for our node group. As you can see, we're using um, our input vector twice once for the subtract uh, and here it is a color one slot which we won't use since we uh, already got our position vector here let's call it vector and for reasons of convenience let's call this one incoming and we're going to interchange them. So you see the incoming is going to the incoming slot and the position is coming to the vector slot. And now we're just going step by step down to the value 0.1. So we need nine different node groups here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. We're always uh, plugging the incoming into our second input and procedurally we're going from top node down to the next like stitching the nodes together step by step and of course we're adjusting the values so that uh, uppermost has the value 0.9, the next has the value 0.8, then 0.7, 0.6, and so on. Here it is, 0.1, our last node. We're going to use this vector and let's have a look. Well, maybe the amplitude is quite high. We see steps um, like levels in a building. So here, our amplitude for our depth map. Here's the amplitude is too high. 0.1 seems too high. So what about 0.05, still too high. 0.01 seems okay but a little bit flat maybe 0.02 uh, and then some steps are appearing again so in between uh, I still can see some let's keep it at 0.01 and sorry uh, I just see we have to change these two values yes this is how it looks much better now you see that uh, from each side we really see stones coming out of the ground and occluding other stones like the yellow one back here is occluded by the front one let's change the light to sunlight to get better shading raise our bump value and last but not least we can add some ambient occlusion now since we have a very uh, deep offset for our parallax 
we could use our height map let's choose it from the list here is the height map of course we're going to map it with the same vector and finally we're going to color color mix mix RGB in multiply mode and by raising the factor you see that the deeper parts of our texture are going to get darker so that's it we uh, changed our texture you see of course if we get too close we will see some stretching and distortions but it looks much better than um, just using the texture flat mapped on the ground so if I if I just copy the whole mess here for comparison and just use the position vector here you see that we have a very flat mapping compared to the parallax occlusion setup we just did so I hope you enjoyed that of course uh, there is much more going on if you do it uh, in, in connections with UV maps but that also demands that you have to calculate the directions of uh, the U and the V vector in space and uh, for that I made a product uh, making that with a couple of shaders you can buy them at Blender Market um, I hope you like this tutorial you can use it uh, to map your landscape grounds grass textures stone textures and stuff where you don't actually care about where exactly the UV maps are where the texture starts and where it ends let's quickly just try uh, to overlay the height map just for comparison I think that looks a little bit better and uh, if you want to adjust the size of our map of course we would need to map it in front of each single texture we're using so I would add a mapping node right here between just in front of the texture so I could go from here into the vector and plug it in here and in this uh, in the scale I could adjust the size let's make it bigger five times bigger I'm scaling it with the factor 0 0.2 as well as in front of these two textures so let's do it all together with one mapping node here okay this also means we could uh, bump up our amplitude five times so 0.01 is becoming 0.05 and we end up with the same depth in relation to the new size I hope you see the use of uh, the nodes of course this is a very mathematical approach uh, parallax occlusion mapping is quite complicated especially if it comes to UV maps where we have to uh, calculate the U and the V direction of our mapping I did so with uh, my parallax shader pack on Blender Market if you want it uh, check out the link in the description to my products you will find it there I hope you learned something new and happy blending. Bye.